understand verses 1 and 3, 22. So you'll understand what those are in just a moment. I will say, it says, I spake also to Zedekiah, king of Judah, according to all these words, saying, Bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him and his people and live. I will he die, and I will begin my people, my sword, my famine, my pestilence, and the Lord has spoken against the nation, and will not serve the king of Babylon. Therefore, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that I speak unto you, saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon, and they prophesy a lie unto you. For I have not sent them, saith the Lord, if they prophesy a lie in my name, that I might drive you out, that you might perish the prophets that prophesy unto you. And I have spake to the priests, all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, hearken not to the words of your prophets that prophesy unto you, saying, Behold, the vessels of the Lord's house shall now shortly be brought again from Babylon, for they prophesy a lie to you. Hearken not unto them, serve the king of Babylon, and live, wherefore the city be laid waste. But if the prophets, the word of the Lord be with them, let them now make intercession of the Lord of hosts, the vessels that are left in the house of the Lord, and the house of the king of Judah and at Jerusalem, go not to Babylon. Verse 19, for the Lord, let say the Lord, concerning the pillars, concerning the seed, concerning the bases, the residue of the vessels that are made in the city. Nebuchadnezzar took Nob, carried away captive Jeconia, the son of Jehiah, king of Judah, and Jerusalem, and Babylon, all the nobles of Judah and Jerusalem. Yea, let us say, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, concerning the vessels that remain in the house of the Lord, the Lord, and in the house of the king of Judah and of Jerusalem, who shall be carried away to Babylon. There should be until the day that I visit them, saith the Lord, I will bring them up and will restore them into this place. I want to take a thought out of the beginning of verse number 19 and verse 22. The Bible says, talking about the pillars, concerning the pillars. Now, we don't have pillars. I was trying to find some, so these are going to be pillars. Amen. Verse 22 says, they shall be carried away to Babylon. I want to talk a little bit, just give me a little bit of time this afternoon on this simple thought, the ministry of the pillars. The ministry of the pillars. Would you lift your hands one more time and pray? We love you, God. We thank you for the worship and the praise that's gone forth. We thank you, God, for visiting us in our Sunday school hour. We thank you, God, for your touch today. I can feel your spirit moving in this place. I don't want to be a hindrance to your word, God, but I want you to strengthen me God, as I minister this word today. Let your anointing fall, destroy every yoke of bondage. Let there be a response to your word, not because of me, but because of your word. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. God bless you. King David had a dream and a desire. He wanted to make God a house. God told David that he would not be able to build him, build God a house, but that his son would. David then passed the responsibility of building the temple and to Solomon. Solomon carefully crafted the temple instruments. He meticulously planned the colors, the arrangements, and the odors that were in the temple. Amen. Even to the faintest detail. The Bible describes the temple and what all they planned in 1 Kings chapter number 7. In the description of the temple, there is a point of emphasis in verse 21 of 1 Kings chapter 7. The Bible says that he set up the pillars of the porch of the temple. He set up the right pillar and called the name thereof Jacob. He set up the left pillar and called the name thereof Boaz. These pillars were not just any pillars, but these were special pillars. If they weren't special, then the Bible wouldn't have mentioned that they had names. Because when you read through 1 Kings 7, you'll find that it states many other pillars in the Bible, in that temple. But there's two specific that had a name. This right one and the left one of Jacob and Boaz. Amen. Jacob means he will establish. And Boaz means fleetness or it means strength. These pillars were made of brass and had supports at their bases and lily work at the very top of them. They weren't only great to look at. On these two pillars, all the weight of the temple would sit upon them. If they were to go down or if they were to crumble, then the whole temple would come crumbling down. Now let's fast forward a few years into Jeremiah's day. In Jeremiah's day, we find that King Nebuchadnezzar came and raided the temple. 
he was going to destroy the temple. The Bible says later on, and we'll read in Jeremiah 52, that the temple is burned with fire. And the Bible says that he comes and that he was going to remove the pillars that were at the center of the temple. The fulfillment of the prophecy is in Jeremiah 52, verses 12 through 17, if you want to turn there. The Bible says that in the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, which was the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guard which served the king of Babylon into Jerusalem, and burned the house of the Lord and the king's house and all the houses of Jerusalem, and all the houses of the great men burned he with fire. And all the army of the Chaldeans that were with the captain of the guard break down all the walls of Jerusalem round about. And then this uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, carried away captive certain of the poor of the people and the residue of the people that remained in the city. And those that fell away and fell to the king of Babylon and the rest of the multitude. But Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, left certain of the poor of the land for vine dressers and for husbandmen. And the pillar of brass, which is talking about Jacob and Boaz, those were the pillars of brass. The pillars of brass that were in the house of the Lord, and the bases and the brazen sea that was in the house of the Lord. The Chaldeans break and carried all the brass of them to Babylon. I want you to just walk with me a little bit. When the pillars were removed from the temple, you got to understand that these were the weight-bearing pillars. That everything from the roof and other supports of the pillars rested upon those two right there, Boaz and Jacob. I've never been much into architecture or, or building things, but I do know that before you remodel a house, if you want to take out a wall or if you want to do something, you need to find out where the support beams are, where the support walls are. Because if you try to make your living room bigger by knocking out a certain wall, then the whole upstairs can crumble and the roof can crumble and the whole house can come caving in. There's something to be said about the support beams and the supports that were in the temple of Boaz and of Jacob. Understand that when the pillars were removed, they understood the temple would collapse on itself. The positioning of the pillars were in the center. 
will come. And if the big pillars in the church go, then the smaller ones will buckle under the pressure. They will crumble under the pressure. If the main pillars go, the other pillars aren't strong enough to support the weight of the building. The other pillars aren't strong enough. If you take out a support wall in your house, the other walls aren't strong enough to hold up the rest of the house. And so it comes a cave in. And so the devil understands the same thing. Amen. If the main pillars go, the other ones aren't going to be strong enough to maintain and sustain the integrity of the building. The work will stop. Amen. If the main pillars crumble, the work will cease if the main pillars fall. But we need to pray for the pillars of the church. Dry, and it's weave my hair in a web and 
do this and do that. And every time the, so Delilah would wake him up and say, hey, the, the Philistines are upon you. Samson would break the roads and break the vines and break the wind, whatever is going on, and he would do what he always did. But we know that the last time, so Delilah would begin to press him and say, well, tell me where your strength is. Finally, he had got enough of what was going on, and he told her, if you just cut my hair, I'll be like every other person and shake my hair. So he falls asleep on her lap. She calls the Philistines in. She cuts his hair. And she says, hey, Samson, the Philistines are upon me. And he shook himself, the Bible says, as he did before, but he was not with the spirit of the Lord had departed from him. Samson had his eyeballs plucked out. Samson was not like every other man. They plucked out his eyes, and they plucked out, and they brought him into the temple of Dagon. The Bible says, we, we, we love the story of the judges, and I think it's 16, verse 22 and 23, talks about how being the hairs of his head begin to grow again. I love, I love talking about restoration, and I love preaching about that story just like, just like the rest of it. I know you like hearing about it, too. But I want you to look at something that I never really noticed before until this last week and a half or so. The Bible says that when they call for Samson, that Samson, they said, bring him out and bring him into the pillars. Bring him out and put him into the pillars that we may have support with him. So they would bring him out, and I don't know what that meant as far as having support with him. They just mocking him, whipping him, I don't really know. The Bible really doesn't say but he would come out to the pillars, and then he'd go back to his jail cell. Finally, they were calling for him again and saying, hey, bring him out so we can have support with him. And the Bible says that he, in Judges 16 and 26, the Bible says, And Samson said to the lad that held him by the hand, He said, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars were upon the house standing, that I may lean upon them. Samson asked this lad to take him to the main pillars, so that he could lean upon them and feel the pillars where the house was standing. Something happened when Samson got between the pillars. Something happened when he got between the pillars at the house stood on. Something happened when Samson got between them. When he got between the pillars that supported the whole house, Samson started to receive restoration. His hair was growing back. But he hadn't felt anything yet. But it wasn't until he got between the pillars that he started to feel something, sister. It wasn't until he got in between the pillars that he started to get his vision back. And I don't mean his natural vision because his eyes were plucked out. But I mean he started to get some spiritual vision back. It was between the pillars, the main pillars of the house, where Samson got his strength back. It was between the pillars that Samson won the battle. It was between the pillars where the purpose of his life was restored. And the Bible says that he leaned upon the pillars. The word lean means to trust in or rely on or to lean. God has placed people in this church that we can lean on. He has put people in our lives that we can trust in. He has put people in our lives that we can rely on. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to understand that God has given us people that you can lean on when you've lost your vision. Hey, Samson said, I've lost my vision. But get me between the pillars. Get, get me between the main ones that are holding this thing together. Get me between them. When you've lost your vision, get by the pillars. You're going to get your vision back. Hey, Amen. God has given us people that you can lean on when you've lost your God has given us people that you can lean on when you need victory. If you can just get in between the pillars and lean on them, I'm telling you, you can get deliverance and you can get encouragement and you can get healing and you can get restoration. All you've got to do is find the pillars and just get between them. Just find the pillars and just get between them. If you look at what Samson did, he got between the pillars. And what did he do when he got between the pillars? He prayed. He got between the pillars. And he says, you know what? I'm feeling something that I felt a long time ago. I'm feeling something that I haven't felt in a little while. I've lost my vision. I've lost my strength. But this person brought me in between the main pillars. And I'm just leaning on them. I'm, I'm relying on them. I'm telling you that if you feel like walking away from God, you don't have to walk away from God. You've got to find yourself some pillars in the church and you better run to them and you better get between them. You better lean on them. You better trust in them. Why? Because they're holding you up. They're the ones that are supporting you. If you can just get between the pillars, you'll get your strength back. You'll get your vision back. You'll get restoration in your life. But you've got to get between the pillars. There's a ministry 
the short 31 years that I've been alive, it was 32 years that I've been alive. There have been many times in my life that I felt like walking away. There have been many times in my life I felt like giving up. I felt like quitting ministry. I felt like throwing in the towel. I felt like doing all that the same as you feel. But thank God that there were some pillars to dream, right? That I could run to and that I could talk to. And those pillars, when they saw that I was slacking off, they said, no, 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 I'm not letting you go. Amen. Just get between them. Just lean on me a little bit. I know you can't take another step. And I know you feel like you can't go another minute. But I'll tell you, you just lean on me. If you can just lean on the support. If you can lean on the pillar. If you can lean on the amen that are holding this whole thing together. You can make it through. Thank God for the pillars that are in our lives. Thank God for the pillars that have been in my life. That when they looked at me and said, you're stopping. And when they looked at me and said, you're not doing this right. Hey man, just lean on me a little bit. Hey man, I thank God for those people. Hey man, we sing that song, lean on me. When you're not strong, I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. I wish that we would really take that song to heart. I wish somebody would just lean on an elder in the church. I wish somebody would lean on the ministry. I wish somebody would grab a sister or a brother and say, you know what, I'm not going to, I feel like I can't make it. Can I just lean on you? Just a little bit. Can I lean on you, Brother Clyde, for some wisdom? Can I lean on you? Hey Amen. When the gifts of the Spirit are moving, can, can we lean on you? Because it's a ministry. People think, oh, I've got to get behind the pulpit to minister. No. Your faithfulness is a ministry. Your dedication is a ministry. You're some of those people, you're like Jake and Boaz. You're right in the middle and you're holding it up. You've got this thing working. You may never get behind a pulpit, but you are so vital to this church. And you're vital to the kingdom of God. You may never sing. You may never teach a Sunday school lesson. But you are so vital to the kingdom of God. You're so vital. There's a ministry. It just be there. When I think of pillars, when I think of I think of faithfulness. I think those pillars took a day off and said, I just don't feel like holding this weight up today. I think that pillar of Jacob just said, eh, I've been holding this up a long time. I'm not tired. I'm tired of holding this bad boy up. I think Boaz said, yeah, I know my day needs strength. I'm just going to give up a little bit. When I think of pillars, I think of stability. I think of perseverance. I think of dedication. I think of faithfulness. I thank God for faithful people. I thank God for people, hey amen, that when you come to church, you, you, you know they're going to be in the house of God. I thank God for people that when the church doors are open, I don't have to wonder about some people and say, man, I don't know if they're going to be in church today. I know they're going to be in church today because they're a pillar. They're a support to this thing. They're helping hold everything together. They're the glue that's holding things together. Hey amen. I thank God for your faithfulness. I thank God, hey amen, that when Tuesday rolls around, you're in the prayer meeting. Hey amen. You're upstairs and you're praying with us. I don't have to wonder where you are. And then I know that when 7 o'clock rolls around on Tuesday, there's going to be a bunch of people that are going to gather together upstairs and we're going to pray the prayer now. And God's going to do something. I don't have to worry about that. I thank God for those that come to my house and faithful. That are showing up because they're pillars of the church. They're holding this thing together. When everybody else might be taking a vacation, or I'm not preaching about vacation, don't think about that. But when other people, hey amen, are just taking it easy, or when other people are just laying back and being lazy at home, that's what I mean by vacation. People that just don't come while they're in town. If you're in town, hey amen, we need to be in the house of God. We have got to help support this thing. Because you don't understand that if you fall, there might be a child that's watching you, there's a new convert that's watching you. Church trying to tear pillars down. We should never worry about 
what sister so-and-so is saying to brother so-and-so. And what this is going on. And this, why are they doing that? What about this? Blah, blah, blah. We spend so much time criticizing and critiquing and judging one another. We should never have to. We should never have to guard ourselves against our own people trying to tear the pillars down. I don't care how old they are. I don't care what kind of parents they have. I tell you what, every saint of God, from the youngest to the oldest, no matter how rich or poor, no matter if they smell good, they don't smell good, we need everybody to be in the house of God. We should not have to fight each other and devour one another. Sometimes in the seven churches, Jesus is backing compliments. 
The Church of Philadelphia is the only church that there's nothing negative to be said about them. It talks about them overcoming. It talks about them never uh, not giving in to the seat of Satan. It talks about a lot of things about their love and their charity. In Revelation 3.12, it talks about them that overcome them. Will I make a pillar in the temple of my God? And he shall go no more out. There are too many people that are in and out of church. It's because you're not a pillar. I don't mean that to be mean, but it's because you're not a pillar. If you're a pillar, he says, I'm going to make you a pillar and you're going to go no more out. And I'll write upon the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, which is Jerusalem. Coming down from heaven, my God, and I will write upon him a new name. If you're tired of the constant struggle of, you know, when they go to church, or when they don't go to church, I hear that. We need to just become a pillar and overcome. Overcome and be a pillar of the church. And so I don't you understand about my life. I don't need to know about your life. I need to know about what God says. And I know you got a lot going on so a lot. But do you want to be a pillar or do you not want to be a pillar? Because if you're a pillar, he's going to put you in the house of God. And you're going to help support this whole thing. I want to be an overcomer. And I want to be a person that if Sister Hunt needs something, she can lean on me. And she loses strength when people are losing faith. I want you to be able to lean on me. And there are people in this church that are faithful pillars. There are people that gather here. You know there are people that gather here nightly to pray. They gather here nightly to pray. I'll slide on Tuesday and Thursday to your church. But they can come on Sunday nights and they come and pray. We've got faithful people that are pillars of church that come nightly. And they come and pray. And I'll come here at night sometimes and do something and have a meeting. And I can hear from the sanctuary. I can hear the cries of God going up. And talking to people who are interceding and travailing for one another. And praying for you. Your names are being called out every single night here at this church. Because there are pillars that have gathered together and say, you know what I know? I know they're having a hard time. I, I know Sister Sherry might be having a hard time. So they come and they're praying and say, God, just let, let Sherry lean on me just a little bit. Hey man, people are having a hard time. I want them to realize, I want them to understand that we can't do this thing without you. We can't do this thing without you. And as more and more pillars fall, more and more weight gets put on the same pillars. It's not long before the weight of those pillars begin to come. And the whole house comes crashing down. But we need more pillars in the church. We need more pillars in this church. We need more people to be faithful in this church. We need more people to get active in this church and get involved in this church. We need more people to stop saying, Brother so and so will do it, Sister so and so will do it. We need you, amen, to say, you know, I'm going to be a pillar here. I, I look, because there are pillars that are bubbling. There are pillars that have so much weight on their shoulders and so much weight in their spirit that they just need somebody to come and be a base around them. They just need somebody to say, I just need a support system. Because even taking it Boaz has something along their base to keep them from falling. 